Savor the silence. Breathe in the scent of the forest. Follow enchanting streams. Discover rocky crags hidden among the trees. Woodland as far as the eye can see. You could easily get lost here if it weren't for the 8,000 marked hiking trails. The Palatinate forest is extremely diverse with its sandstone rocks and castles. We're a cross-border biosphere reserve shared with France. We have wonderful hiking and cycling trails for the whole family, along rivers and past mountains. There is something for everybody. But more than anything, the Palatinate Forest offers an intense experience with nature, and visitors appreciate that. We'll go back along the shore to the campsite, and then we can go for a swim. There are wonderful little hiking trails, not broad ones, but lots of small, narrow trails for mountain bikes, for instance. I do a lot of mountain biking. And another thing is that you can stop in lodges along the way, where you can get a good, reasonably priced meal. Well fortified, it's time to go on. Rock formations of colorful sandstone make the landscape unique. They're 200 million years old. Because the rocks are relatively soft, wind and erosion take their toll. The result? Strange and wonderful shapes like these. The Devil's Table near Don is one of the most striking. It's also a regional landmark. These formations have a magical attraction for rock climbers. Mako Kusta moved here because of them. The climbing routes are often demanding and challenging, even for experienced climbers like him. What I find fascinating in the Southern Palatinate is the combination of old and new climbing styles. A few metal spikes used to be cemented into the rocks. Nowadays, modern sport climbers have developed an entirely different style. Here you find both. In order to make the world of the rocks accessible to as many people as possible, new walking trails have been laid out in the past few years. One of the most beautiful is the 90-kilometer-long Felsenland-Sagenweg. It features another of the region's highlights, its rock castles. The view from Wegenburg, the highest castle in the Palatinate, is unparalleled. In the Middle Ages, this region was a center of power, with more than 500 castles. The most massive one is near Anweiler, Trifels Castle. In the 12th century, it was the favorite castle of the Emperor Frederick Barbarossa and the treasury of the Holy Roman Empire of the German nation. But it actually became famous for something quite different. We found out that uh, Richard the Lionheart was kept uh, prisoner here. So we thought, well, we've got to come up and find out. Yeah. So this was it. Yes. <laughs> Richard uh, the Lionheart was here which is very important for me to know and to, to learn more about his life. He was a very, a very interesting fellow. And he was the most famous prisoner the castle ever saw. In 1193, he spent a few weeks of captivity in Trifes Castle. According to legend, England ransomed its king for the huge sum of 35 tons of silver. Not far from Trifes, the Palatinate forest drops gently downwards to the Upper Rhine Plain, to Germany's second largest wine growing region. It's also where you'll find the German wine route. Established in 1935, it traverses the Palatinate wine region. A trip along the route is a great way to enjoy this cultivated landscape and the local hospitality. And after passing the German wine gate, you'll find yourself in France. The cycling and hiking trails continue on the other side of the border. Only 
Only the flair of the villages lets you know that you're now in France. And the French cuisine is more than tempting. Whether in Germany or France, visitors here can enjoy the best of both countries.